ephemeral art to me is something that doesn't necessarily last physically in time, but it's something that makes an impression on you or evokes something in you that you get to enjoy even after it's gone. Ephemeral art is art placed in nature. I believe it's dedicated to nature and it morphs over time. Like the, the wind is blowing now, so where will these feathers be when I come back tomorrow? Or what will the birds take? You know, these cranberries that I'm throwing around. They, um, they probably won't, won't be just like this in a couple of days. And so that's part of how art, ephemeral art, is ever-changing. I think of it as a form of appreciating nature so creating it makes you see it when you're looking at it for materials and hopefully it's this combination of standing out but also being part of the environment um, and that it should go completely back to nature. Part of the idea behind the ephemeral art is that it will change. It will get blown away with the wind or washed away with the water or an animal will come running through, things like that. Um, and, and so it kind of makes you kind of detach yourself a little bit from the art, knowing that it's going to change and going to disappear. But it also sort of frees you up for, you know, just doing simple things that don't have to be perfect and don't have to be a big art installation. So Libby and I have gathered some uh, pieces of nature just in our walks around uh, Mitkoff this summer and we decided this would be a good opportunity to create some art out of it and show how the human aspect weaves into nature and it, it is here for us always and that's been a great reminder for this summer as well as nature is always embracing us and we want to show thank you and kind of a, an offering for that. Our art piece is called A Sort of Fairy Tale. Um, Libby named that. We've been driving around listening to a lot of Tori Amos and we're just creating whatever. I like the star designs and so I, I started placing down the stars and we'll see uh, what follows that and just creating different circles kind of like a mandala and until we run out of our nature supplies. I came down to this, the Whale Observatory beach to collect rocks to decorate and return to the beach. And uh, I have one that's bird. Uh, it's made with corn stalks and I uh, made some cordage with corn stalks. And there's a couple feathers also on the head. Uh, the second rock uh, has a lichen collar and it is, uh, Again, cordage, this was made from the canary reed grass that is invasive to Alaska, so I'm trying to use it in a more productive fashion. Um, made a cordage with that and then um, made kind of a basket net. And so it is net rock. Actually, I let the rocks talk to me and tell me what they wanted to be. <laughs> These were just, they, they loved being decorated. <laughs> My 
my mama had an idea and we made it. Then my daddy came up and he helped. I did help us all the white for the stripes. The white stripes are the stars. My mom think it will look pretty on her star. And they got some ferns. And sheds. So it can look cool. I have created Flora, and I was thinking about my grandmother who used to come out here after she was waiting for her husband to come home from halibut fishing, and she would have her lunch, and invariably the, the boat would come in. She told me the story that they didn't have radios and things back then, so when her husband and sons went out on the fishing boat, that was a long time. That would be two weeks and she would be anxious after two weeks thinking they're coming back. And if I just go make my lunch and sit out here, you know. But she was a woman that had a strong sense of intuition and her mother did in Norway. And so she would um, tell me about that. And so I just wanted to commemorate my grandma and I made Flora with all kinds of things that I found on different adventures. I, at first, didn't know what to envision because I thought she would be all made out of um, twigs. But then I realized she needed to look alive. And so that's when I started adding all this stuff. And so I guess I was really happy once I started po poking these into her head. <laughs> That was really fun to do, and I'm going to poke some more in there. <laughs> this is a, such a dynamic place right here where Wrangell Narrows meets Frederick Sound. And it's kind of a powerful area, it feels like. And so I often come out here at the end of the day and look out, and I just think it's very special. Seuss's whimsy. So I made it out of Usnea longissima, which is like old man's beard or witch's hair. And so it was fun to get to think about kind of common items that we see and what I could do with that. This was a bit more of um, inspired directly by Andy Goldsworthy because he has some pieces that he has made out of icicles and he licked the ends and he stuck them together and created these hoops around a tree with it. Um, which was incredible, and I don't know how to do that. Um, but I was trying to think about a natural Southeast version inspired by that. And that's when I started thinking about this lichen and this location too, being good for it. But I really like how it came out more whimsical um, than the original image in my mind. I just recently read a book called Weaving Sweetgrass and for some reason that came to my mind when I was out here with the grass around me and I started to do these little nests of grass. Not really sweetgrass but it's grass and they're really fun to do and it just came together and when I came down here um, there was this log here and another one there so I thought oh it's a perfect spot I'm just going to use it and I started out with some heavy duty uh, driftwood and just built it from there here it is <laughs> so it's been fun it's been fun out here I love the fall in the rainforest. It's my favorite time of the year. So I wanted to do 
something that expressed that fall colors and themes. So I kind of came up with the idea of using the colors and the oranges and the reds and the greens and starting to transition out toward fall. And that's that was sort of my inspiration. And then just over the last week, I've sort of been looking around as I've been out walking the dogs or doing things and looking for colors. And so, you know, I found the nice orange rhododendron leaves. And I just went and picked a mushroom just now because I wanted to do a mushroom as the centerpiece because that's one of my favorite things to do in the fall is forge for mushrooms and incorporate that. And then the rest of it was just kind of looking around for colors and ideas and um, seeing, seeing what, what came of it. I've often wanted to make a weaving of the rainforest. This is, we're titling it the Alaska Rainforest Blanket. Because <laughs> it is kind of a blanket hanging here. Um, and we wanted to sort of just bring in the different colors of the rainforest. The word blanket just seemed to fit. Um, and I often think as we look across the landscape, vegetation blankets the earth. And so this kind of represents mm -hmm. that too. It really is a blanket over the earth. It's the vegetation. So we have some seaweed, we have bird feathers, we have shells and some invasive species like the daisy, but it's all part of this place that we live and wanted to just incorporate the different colors, maybe from dark to light. That was kind of the idea. Um, but it then kind of incorporate some design as well and texture. We had a lot of fun, a lot of, uh, it was really great going out and foraging. And the same uh, leaf, we got in different stages. Yeah, so different stages of decomposition already. The same species is already right. changing from yellow to burgundy. So it's kind of neat to see if we can find things that are in different stages of, of change. Yeah. And so this will decompose over time and everything on here is biodegradable. But um, and in the meantime, the deer will probably come by and eat the lichen off of it or eat something that they don't usually get <laughs> at this level. They'll be like, woohoo, <laughs> let's have a little snack. There you go. So that's what probably board. happen too. Critters are going to eat it. <laughs> The idea here is that it'll just be these blank strings set up and people can collect natural materials as they're walking along out here and, and weave a few pieces into it. And you know, if people get inspired, they can stand here and weave a huge amount. Or if they just want to put one blade of grass, they can just put one blade of grass. It'll kind of just be whatever happens, happens. And I think it'll be really fun to see how that evolves. One of the things that I enjoy about living here on this cove is that we get to see so much wildlife, whether it's birds, um, sometimes we've had bears, we've had a moose run down the beach. The other day we had an otter out in the mud and in the creek. And um, of course we have herons. So I hadn't really thought about what materials I would use exactly for the piece. Started clipping some of the beach grass and there was some seaweed, some of which is really um, pretty dried out and sort of brownish grayish. Seemed perfect for the body. And I love the beach grass that started to um, get uh, little seeds at the top of it. Was perfect for the beak and perfect for the feet. And then I just uh, grabbed some quartz and a couple shells for the white portions of it. I just like 
the flowing of the feathers off their necks and off their back and so I wanted to be able to represent that and it really didn't take me a lot of time to do it was just a kind of a fun inspiration to make happen on the beach and I like the idea that uh, it won't last forever in fact I was a little concerned this morning when I got up that maybe we'd have deer walking through it because sometimes it looks like a deer dance party out here you'll see um, tracks all over the beach or that the wind would blow it away there'll be a high tide in a few days and so it'll drift away and that's okay you can always make another one I was inspired on my walks on this boardwalk almost every morning. If it's a good morning with the right weather, you will be astounded at how many spider webs there are. And the dew lands on the threads and highlights them and just makes them into these beautiful little treasures. And sometimes there'll be trees with like seven spider webs on them. Um, so I wanted to sort of, I don't know, hopefully pretend I was a spider and maybe catch the dew. This one is, um, it's got a little silk in it, which is spider web material, right? And then this alpaca one, the big, huge, light blue one, I think that one should be pretty likely to get the dew. I have a great appreciation for spiders. It's not, it's not easy. <laughs> I didn't think this was easy to knit, and I was knitting it at home in the comfort of my home and then hanging them up later, whereas the spiders are like, and I read that most of them do it every day. They string one across here. They drop a thread like from wherever, and then the wind takes it to another spot. They wait for the wind. So then they've got like a higher wire. And then they walk across the high wire, making another one, and then they go out to the middle of it. So this one is like this, then they go out to the middle on their other one, and they let their body drop the weight. So now they've got a, a, like a triangle. And then they go down to that center that's just been dropped, and they start another one, and that makes them a Y and that gets them like the first three spokes that they can then do all the other little things on. I thought that was so cool. And my project is called Dew Catchers. I'm hoping that it's sort of, it's interaction with nature is the dew landing on the webs in the morning. So we'll see. <laughs> I actually saw a YouTube video of someone weaving these dragonflies from willow branches and I just thought that was really cute and that would be a fun thing that I could do. So I tried it out and made it and then ended up coming up with this little uh, woven dragonfly. And then I wanted to kind of um, highlight a little bit of the life cycle of the dragonfly so that I also made a dragonfly nymph. And so the nymph lives in the muskeg puddles, so you'll have to look around. Hopefully people will find a nymph in the puddles nearby, the adult dragonfly that's out uh, flying through the muskeg. Yeah, who knows if uh, another dog will come and um, how long this will survive, but... So the ephemeral art is something that we do with our program quite frequently. We're an outdoor-based um, youth program. And so we like to use the natural resources to um, create different kinds of art. And it's all child-led, so they get to decide what they want to make, how they're going to make it. And in that process, they're learning our natural resources. And today we are in one of our favorite spots, which we call the Alderwood. And we are working on our ephemeral art project. So the kids broke off into teams and are working on making their own art pieces. So we have dinosaur creations happening and dump trucks being made out of bark chips and things. And then nature mandalas um, are happening as well. Uh, 
We pretty much just wanted to make a spiral at first, but then we moved on. We wanted to make this little circle-ish, and now we like made it into a portal. And I wanted to do this because um, I like playing stuff with portals in it, so I think we're going to add some more flowers over there too. Originally we were going to just find a lot of wood rinds and we were going to put flowers and stuff and like shape like a heart or something random like that on top of wood rinds but then we didn't get, ended, well then we ended up didn't, not getting enough wood rinds so then I, so then Priya started adding like, she had put the flowers on top, let's just add the pine cones and everything just like basically bursting from the center so we started adding all that, Priya had that idea, ombre? yeah the ombre kinda, kind of like yep and um, portal to fairy, fairy tales. tales. Portal to fairy tales. This is the fairy tale part right here, and then this is all the portal. You can see the fairy tale part right here, like a bush of flowers coming out of the fairy tale. Yeah, even we do this a lot too. Yeah, which is probably the fun part. Like we're gonna do this a lot, but I never made something just this good. Like I've seen the teachers or other people make stuff that's good, like yeah. kind of like this. Awesome. But this is like the probably the best thing. I've ever made your kindred box. But a lot of our pieces tend to be kind of smaller and child level. So you'll have to look down probably to find them. It's just a surprise every time. You never know where it's gonna be. Um, but yeah, we like to just like leave these little things that make people smile and the kids love doing it and knowing that it's something that somebody else will find and make them hopefully smile too. What's really cool is when we leave the art behind, it's also like a science lesson when we come back. It's like, oh, look, that's turning brown now, or that's, you know, not there anymore at all. I just like that aspect that it's there for a moment, just like a plant is there for a moment or a leaf is there for a moment. It goes away, it returns. Um, yeah, it's, it's just the cycle that I like. It's ephemeral, it's not supposed to be permanent, which is, um, a whole different way to think about something when you're creating it, that you're creating it knowing that you have to be okay if they're going away. <laughs> you can't get too attached. Knowing that your art piece is going to disappear, a lot of people get, um, when they do their art, they get so tied into it that they don't want something to happen to it. And so, um, I think it's kind of a good practice to step back and say, well, I'm making this thing and it's not forever and that's okay.
been a great experience learning about what ephemeral means and what it does on Earth. And I hope it inspires other people to look at things differently in nature and how they can do something like this. The art is all around us. We don't even need to create it. We can create it in our minds. The shapes and clouds, the plants that are growing on the beach and in the forest are their own little beautiful vignettes. And just to take the time to stop and look at those things and appreciate them. We live in a really beautiful place and I'm struck by that every day. Sometimes I need to slow down and remember that. And there's a lot of beauty out there and a lot of beauty in nature and we should appreciate that and take care of it and respect it.